Hello, Grace Church and friends. My name is Vince Edwards. I'm the music director here at Grace, but as many of you know, I wear multiple hats happily and do a variety of things here. Uh, in this strange and funny and sad time that we are in, we are trying to bring you as much of your beloved church that, as we can into your home so that you can see images and uh, remember what it's like to be here, which hopefully we will all soon be doing together again. So we're going to start a new mini-series that's going to come to you on Tuesdays via Constant Contact, and we're calling it Views of Grace. Just a few months ago, I was uh, sitting on a very long train ride with my laptop, and I started a project which I had wanted to do for some time, which was to create a small brochure that a parishioner or a visitor or guest could take in their own hands and guide themselves around our beautiful church building and find out some of the secrets behind the imagery and splendor that we see here. That was the impetus to think perhaps we could do a similar thing for you at home now. So we're starting Views of Grace today. We'll do an edition each Tuesday and we'll pick a, a very specific section of the church and I will tell you what I know about it. I'm an amateur but passionate student of church architecture and fortunately we have lots of good records here and I've done a bit of research if you hear something that you think isn't correct, send me an email. Uh, if you want to know more about a particular area of the church, send me an email. We'll keep a list and we'll try to get that covered for you. But I think everyone knows when you walk in the front doors of Grace Church off of Westminster Street, your eye immediately is drawn to this area here, the high altar in the sanctuary of the chancel at the front of the church, what we call the church at the east end of the church. And that is an image that most people associate with Grace Church. So I thought we would start here today. We're going to talk a little bit about the high altar itself, the rare dots behind it, the triptych above it, and the what I call the east window. Again, that's liturgical, though we do get a good bit of eastern sun through the corner, so it's not completely off base to call it the east window. As many of you know, the church was built originally in 1846. The nave, which you're not looking at now, the nave where we sit on Sunday mornings, was built in 1846. And originally there was a very shallow, low chancel or choir area, though the choir was in the gallery, so it really was just called the chancel at that point. In 1912, that portion of the church was removed, and from the big arch forward, this large chancel and choir and sanctuary area were added. They were designed by the eminent uh, firm of Cram, Goodhue, and Ferguson in Boston, a really leading Gothic, uh, neo-Gothic architect of the time. So everything we're talking about today comes from that 1912 build of this chancel space. So the, the altar, which you can see looks very much like a tomb, or a, 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 that's, that's symbolic because of Christ's sacrifice for us. So you might think of it in, in that way, very square, very solid, often made of stone, sometimes wood. Ours is made of Hookville and Tabanella marble, the actual altar itself, and these beautiful central panels. I walked up a bit. These wonderful central panels with the beautiful colors of gray, green, and purple, those are Brescia marble. And with our Linton array that we have currently, because we're in Lent, they're particularly beautiful because the purples pull from the, the Linton purple in the cloth. Along the front of the altar here, you see there's some symbols. This is an, an angel or a winged man, which is the symbol for St. Matthew. Here we have the lion, the symbol for St. Mark. Here the ox or bull, the symbol for St. Luke. And on the end, the eagle, the symbol for St. John, our four evangelist writers, four evangelists, the writers of the four gospels. Those appear numerous times in Grace Church, way many more times than you might know, and I'll show you those as we go along through the weeks. But that is, that's what the altar itself is made of, quite solid. If you move up and we look at the, the top of the altar, the cross here, this cross was designed by Cram and was brought in one year after the building was completed, which was 1912, 1913, this beautiful cross was brought in, and I know you can't see it from there, but at the base, once again, the four gospel writers, the evangelists, and their symbol are a very certain circle, the base of this beautiful brass cross. The candlesticks were added much later, 1925, 
but were modeled on Fran's original design, so they appeared to be a set, even though they were made a few years apart. The next section is this wonderful wooden section behind the altar. It's uh, dark oak, and it's polychrome with gold, gold leaf, and has some beautiful carvings along the top, designed by Fran. The two outer sections, here and here, contain the Tree of Life, an obvious symbol for us as Christians, and that continues around the chancel. We can talk about that in another, in another video. So the Tree of Life and the edges, mostly the, the rondels, we might call them, or medallions, are simply uh, geometric Gothic designs. On the end, we have the thistle, which is often used in biblical reference. And on this end, we have the Tudor rose. The Tudor rose is very common uh, in Gothic architecture for centuries back. But one that's particularly special, Father, John, Father Jonathan wanted to make sure I mentioned this one. This particular medallion here was the inspiration for the window in the pavilion over the fireplace, our new pavilion and also the center stone of our labyrinth out in the garden. Uh, our wonderful friend Andrew Raftery, a brilliant, brilliant artist and teacher, took this marvelous symbol and simplified it for us, so it's repeated there in the pavilion. So be sure to take a look when you're there and also when you're here. Just at the top of the Veritas, there's some uh, lettering in gold that goes across and it says, Go ye therefore, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. This is from Matthew 28, 19, and known in our Christian tradition as the Great Commission. These letters are very difficult to read from far away, but if you come up close and take your time, you can make them out. We'll talk about the other lettering around the rest of the chancel on another day, but that is the Great Commission there. So moving from, we've, we've covered High Altar, Raradas, move to the Marvelous Triptych. This went in in 1929, so you might wonder what was there in 1912 when the building was, when this part of the building was built. In 1912, there was a similar, smaller triptych, but painted. In 1929, a well known carver and sculptor from Boston, Ernest Pellegrini, carved and uh, designed and carved this marvelous triptych showing uh, Christ's ascension into heaven. The text says, You men of Galilee, why stand ye here looking up? To heaven. That comes from the book of Acts in the Bible. And this again, and if you count, there, are, there should be 11 disciples. Yes, 11, because Judas, as we know, has gone, gone away by this point. Uh, and two angels holding the banner, and Christ ascending into heaven. This is open, this triptych is open most of the year on Good Friday. And, and we'll probably do it this year, even, even if it's just a couple of us here in the church are doing it. Uh, on Monday Thursday, at the end of the stripping of the altar, we close the triptych. And it has a brown uh, sort of leather surface on the backside with gold banding. And it really changes the look of this church when you walk in the front doors. If you see this closed, it, it dramatically changes the whole scene. But most of the year, it's open with its marvelous polychrony and gold leaf and gothic, intricate gothic carving. And lastly for today, we'll just talk about our great, again, I'm going to call it the East Window. I'll try to get my dates right. So in 1846, when the original church was built and the small chancel was here, there, was, there were three windows over the altar. Uh, a modest little window and then two narrow panels on either side. That chancel was reworked in 1882. So this was well before the new build. It was just remodeled in 1882. The middle window was given away to a local mission. And the two side panels were incorporated into a window in our side aisle uh, just out of the nave. And again, we'll talk about those when we're looking at the nave windows. And a new window was created in 1882. In 1912, when this chancel was built, they took the 1882 window, which wasn't big enough, and they kept portions of it, particularly the crucified Christ and Christ in majesty above, and some of the biblical scenes, and they made it work size-wise by adding, if you look up, you can see there, there are images, block images, but then there are geometric medallions between and beside those images. Those are the pieces added to make the window fit, and perhaps some of the small bits at the top that you probably can't even see. But that's how they made that window fit. 
in 1912, and the but we still have glass from that original 1846 window, which is uh, some of the oldest glass, certainly in Rhode Island, and probably some of the oldest glass in the United States. Um, so just to recap for today, we've covered the high altar, catacomb, by the way, that was the word I couldn't think of earlier, or sepulchre, or catacomb. These, these altars were modeled on that, again, looking at the sacrifice of, of Christ. So high altar with its symbols of the evangelist, the high altar cross and candlesticks, the beautiful wooden Veridanus with its tree of life on either side, scripture along the top, and beautiful medallions. The triptych from 1929, showing Christ's ascension. And then our wonderful east window, uh, which has great history and dates with sunglass uh, back to 1882. And this ensemble, as it were, is what many of us see and love so dearly when we walk into Grace Church. If you've not been up close, I encourage you the next time you're able to be in the building, walk all the way up, no reason not to, and take a good look at these lovely, lovely images uh, and great works of art, frankly, is what they are. Send me a message if you'd like to hear about other parts of the building. I'll be making my way around and will come to you each week on Tuesday and hope that this brightens your day and helps you to stay connected to Grace Church. Thanks so much.